as I film this video, uh, and this will be on Profitly, you know, tomorrow, but I'm also filming it like in person just so you have multiple angles. But as I'm filming this, the NASDAQ is down one and a half percent after hours. You know, this is a, a 10 day chart. We're still way up. We're just overextended. And this is what you have to understand. I think that, you know, today, January 30th, as I'm filming this, I think today was probably max euphoria where the overall market has just been up for, you know, the, pretty much the whole month and really the past few months. And that's allowed a lot of crappy companies to rise um, in spike big, a rising tide lifts all boats. Um, before I even start with my own trades or my analysis, I got to give props to Carlos Herrera. Um, just nailed M-A-R-K for 62%. Uh, he uses stocks to trade breaking news. He has some jet lag too, uh, but he says not like me. I wish that I didn't have as much jet lag. I was taking a midday nap. I needed two hours of sleep for once uh, on, on M-A-R-K. I missed it. The, the tweet was midday, which turned out to be a very scummy tweet, but that happened midday while I was taking a nap. Carlos nailed it. I'm very proud of him. Um, you know, for the month, I'm, I'm up over 12 grand. So this is a pretty good month for me. Uh, I've been in, where was I? I started the year, uh, I was in Miami. I didn't even make it to midnight. How crazy is this for like New Year's Eve? I'm, I'm so jet lagged. I'm all over the place. So I went Miami. Um, then I went to, where'd I go? Hong Kong, Singapore, Manila. Manila to Miami again. Now I'm in LA and then I fly to Bali in a little bit. Stupid schedule. Miami to Asia, back to Miami, back to Asia. I'm like zigzagging. But, you know, that's what you can do when you have financial freedom and when you take on too many projects like I do. But the reason why I want to make this video is because there's so much opportunity learning to take profits into strength. Like Carlos did a great job here Selling at 112, I already saw some people giving him crap and, you know, other people giving uh, my students crap selling too early because M-A-R-K went all the way to 170, but now it's down 50% after hours. Why is it down 50% after hours? Um, I tweeted this, you know, there's an SEC filing out after hours where previously they tweeted that there was like an $80 million deal with Microsoft and you're like, wow, you know, AI, M-A-R-K with Microsoft, $80 million deal, this is amazing. In reality, the SEC filing says that customers will consume $80 million worth of Microsoft cloud service. Not that Microsoft is paying Mark $80 million like their scumbag social media insinuated before. Um, I always say this, expect the worst and you'll never be disappointed, okay? Ride the hype, trade it, but expect them to screw it up. I thought that they were going to do a toxic financing, but I don't think that they can even raise that much money. Um, they just have to lie on their social media. If you lost a lot of money uh, because of their tweet, you know, well, you should blame yourself because you trusted the company. But also there's, there's probably a good like legal case where, you know, they blatantly lied. Like, let me just find this. I should have pulled up this tweet. Uh, let me see. Where was their tweet? So this was Stocks and Trade Breaking News you know, highlighting the tweet. And they said, uh, Microsoft making remark global together, $80 million initial partnership. So they're, they're specifically insinuating that, you know, it's an $80 million deal. But then the SEC filing clarifies the customers will use 80 million. Very, very scumbaggy. But stocks of trade breaking news. Again, this is why I say ride the hype. Just never believe it. They alerted it. When I was taking a nap, sadly, but you know, the stock was trading around 30, 40 cents. You could have bought the initial breakout or you could have even bought the dip. And we saw this earlier uh, in the week on PCSA when it had the breakout above 370, broke out from 370. I got in on PCSA 370 uh, to 420. Then it went back down to 370 and it was the, the second dip that actually led to the bigger spike. So Mark did the exact same thing. You can either buy the initial one if you have stocks to trade breaking news, which you should. If you miss, you know, the, the basically 35 cents to 50 cents, nice 50% run up. Then it comes back down to 40 cents, which is a key breakout level. And then buy the breakout here at 50 cents. There's so much opportunity. Or you can buy the breakout here at 80 cents. Or you can buy the breakout here at a dollar. Um, no matter what you do, there's a lot of upside. And 
being, you know, alerted right away is huge. I was frankly sleeping just due to my schedule. I'll be straight up with you. Um, but I did pretty well today on PXLW, which was another stocks to trade breaking news alert. Uh, let's see. Too many tabs open. Did they tweet this earlier? Uh, four hours ago. No, they didn't. Um, stocks to trade. Sorry, there's a bunch of plays. It's a good problem to have, but like I said, it is actually a problem. Oh, shout out to Jennifer. She also got in at 39 cents out at 69 cents on MARK. And she's like, it's okay. You know, I'm, it's still going, but I'm happy. And I, I really think that's, you know, that's the right way to, to think about things. Um, and you see, like, getting out too early really helps. Here's PXLW. This is what I was trading. Uh, Pre-market, uh, they did a deal with Disney. And so, like, again, these small companies, like, this is good legitimizers where, you know, MARK is working with Microsoft. Okay, it's not the $80 million that their scumbag social media team insinuated. PXLW actually has a press release with Disney and Disney is going to use PXLW's, um, you know, true cut motion technology. They're, they're basically video editing software. In their press release on PXLW, um, Disney even says they're going to use it. So this is not like just some BS agreement. And PXLW was very choppy. So I don't mind selling it too soon. And as you see, like it actually, you know, went down to end the day. But in the morning, we're having an amazing spike. And whether you bought the initial spike or again, the breakout here at 170 up to 220 or the breakout here at 220 and it got up to like 240, but here it's a little uh, overextended. There's upside, okay? And I profited it a few times making roughly a thousand bucks. SHOT, I actually had overnight. Um, I kind of psyched myself out because it, it wasn't really gapping up, but uh, pre-market, you know, didn't tell the whole story. I, I thought that it was going to open in the threes. I thought that it, you know, pre-market would be in the threes. It did spike to the threes right at the open. So in hindsight, I should have given this more time. All of these trades, I want you to understand, even my loss on RVSN, you know, this thing, <laughs> this is funny to look at from Friday till now. Obviously, I wouldn't have held the whole time. It was a choppy stock. The breakout was weak. But I'm buying this on Friday. Today, I'm, I'm filming this on Tuesday. RVSN went all the way up to 23 this morning. 23, okay? In three trading days, it nearly uh, two and a half times your money on that breakout. And I really wish that I hadn't been flying on Monday. Um, like I said, sometimes, you know, my, my travel gets in the way. And when there's too many plays, like, and I'm traveling or I'm jet lagged, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect me. And same thing with you. Maybe you're not traveling as much. Maybe you're just busy in life. I understand that it's frustrating if you're busy and you miss a play, but I'm not discouraged. I'm encouraged. And I did a video lesson on my loss, which hardly anybody watches because people don't want to like think about their losses. I think it's a good lesson. But if you look at how I'm trading and I'm making 12 grand on the month, really underestimating RVSN, underestimating SHOT, underestimating PXLW, there's a trend here, okay? I'm not timing these things perfectly. I'm not hodling. I actually could be more aggressive, but I'm still profiting quite nicely, trading with very small amounts. Um, so I'm really happy. You know, if I can teach you how to profit while being safe, while, you know, exiting too quickly and responsibly, I think that's a good strategy. You know, I'd be more worried like if you overstayed and you hodled and even if you make money hodling, there's no way to really take profits, especially taking profits responsibly because you're just hodling, which is holding on for dear life. So I don't think you need to do that. Um, I, I posted this tweet. I was like, are you not entertained? I really think that this is near max uh, euphoria. You know, like we have max panic on the way down, but when all these crappy stocks, CRBP, RVSN, PXLW, now MARK, spiking big, it's near max euphoria, especially when bigger companies and like the NASDAQ are dropping big um, after hours. You know, you, you see these, these signs where the crappiest stuff, the, the fluff rises, 
and then the overall markets and the biggest companies are tanking. Um, NEXI was a big short squeeze too. Congrats to everybody who used XGPT. They had this on their watch list. This is how you should use these new tools. XGPT had it. I mean, this is a huge spike and it finished way off of its highs. But, you know, from eight to 28, you got to be looking for these short squeezes. You got to be looking for these big runners in the morning. Um, I mean, this is just beautiful. So congrats to a lot of you on, on Nexi. But uh, like this tweet says, you know, I, I want you to capitalize either with profits or knowledge increases. Even if you miss it, even if you sell too soon, you recognize supernova after supernova after supernova. And, you know, I, I get a lot of people who think I'm a scam. They think penny stocks are a scam. See it. Okay. Seeing is believing. And, and really all you have to do is start to say, wait a minute, this is going to happen again and again and again. Let's learn from, you know, Andrew, my, not quite my newest millionaire student now, because now there's David, but my second latest millionaire student, Andrew, um, let's not forget, like he blew up his first few accounts and I was like, what, what kept you going? And he was like, well, I, I see it happening. Um, I see these plays, whether or not you're capitalizing, you know, and this is what all these students do. This picture was in Positano a few summers ago. All these students, okay, they all saw it happening over and over again. Huddy, I think, is my, my favorite example from this group because fortunately we were in Arizona together during the mania of 2020, uh, 2021, and he has been in the challenge for several years. He never really sized up. And I remember in the car, I was like, Huddy, you are my smartest non-millionaire student. At the time, he hadn't crossed a million dollars. And I was like, now is the time to size up because he knew everything and it was a hot market. Uh, preparation meeting opportunity. The majority of you, it's not time to size up. It is a hot market, but you're unprepared. You got to get the preparation first. Um, but you know, once you start seeing it, this is Andrew, where even though he blew up his first few accounts, he didn't even join my challenge right away. Once he joined the challenge and like learned discipline, he, he stopped blowing up accounts, but he kept at it because he saw play after play after play. That's what we're seeing right now. Okay. And this doesn't happen in every market. And frankly, you know, I, I really haven't capitalized, um, that great in January. There's a lot more opportunity, but whether or not you capitalized with profits, whether or not you missed them, whether or not you sold too soon, at least you're witnessing it. Cause it's very difficult for me to explain this kind of madness and these kinds of run-ups. Um, you know, you can look at it after the fact, but being there, seeing a play go from, you know, right at the open, NEXI from 8 to 28 in two hours. Okay? So anybody who thinks this is a scam, anybody who tells you stay away from penny stocks, remember this chart. Remember this video. Okay? 8 to 28 in two hours. RVSN? In five days, you know? This has gone from five to 23. Not perfect, not easy, but it has gone up quite a bit. Um, and, and you're gonna see these plays for various reasons, okay? MEXI, you can say is just a short squeeze. RVSN had the AI press release, um, you know, about AI for railroads. Mark had the, the tweet with Microsoft, um, you know, CRBP. Uh, that one was a, a big spiker, although this is coming down too. So start to understand that these things can go up, but they also have a limited um, shelf life. You know, CRBP was a great squeezer on Friday, eight to 40, five times your money, but it also came back down to 20 and now actually bounced to 28. I'm surprised at how some of these plays are bouncing, but whether we're talking uh, CRBP, RVSN, NEXI, M-A-R-K, or um, where did my PXLW go? It's not just one stock that's, that's going up a lot. It's several. And they can come down in a hurry too, so you don't want to overstay. Let's see, anybody asking questions? I'll do a, a separate video with the, the questions. But I love students sharing their, their gains um, in, in their trades and just being real, you know, I, I really like nerd saying I made 3000 and lost 300. All my trades were breakouts. Um, fantastic job. And, and really dip and rip, 
you know, the best month making 15 grand more than me. I want more students making more than me, but do not feel bad if you're not. Don't feel bad if you're starting small. Don't feel bad if you're not making money. All 30 plus of my millionaire students made very little to nothing and some even lost five, 10,000 in their first year or two while you're trying to figure this stuff out. All of these plays are, you know, a lot of these are one day runners. A lot of these are short squeezes and they will break your heart if you let them, okay? M-A-R-K, I warned in the chat room before the market closed in case anybody's like, oh, I thought I should go long, you know, first green day. You can say first green day all you want, but you also have to recognize the risks. Right here, 343. I said, how much have you guys made on M-A-R-K? Tell me your solid trades, please. And don't chase now offering likely, okay? I've just learned to expect the worst. Some people are like, how do you know? You don't know. But if you expect the worst, you're never going to be disappointed. And it's pretty beautiful. Um, you know, so don't feel bad if you sell too soon. I love this uh, from our mind saying in a mark at 82 out at 90 cents, nice discipline. In at a dollar, out at a dollar 13, making 5, 10, 15 percent. And I'm proud to be your new challenge student. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Okay, thank you, our mind. Thank you to all of you who are willing to be open-minded and study this. You have to remember, most people just want to hold and hodl and they want hot picks. They don't want to think about expecting the worst. They don't want to think about max euphoria. They don't want to think about how these plays can be influenced by the overall market. They don't want to think that, you know, when RVSN has positive railroad AI news and it spikes up big in the morning, they don't want to think that it could drop 50% in the afternoon. No one really wants to deal with the reality of this niche. And this is why I teach, because I'm proud of how far these plays can go, especially in a hot market. I'm proud of expecting the worst, so not chasing. And if you look at my trading, this is not anywhere near best case scenario, okay? I am not the best trader, I'll be real with you. But I have made millions of dollars and I think that you can also make millions of dollars without being the best trader, without being the smartest, without staying in one place at, at you know one time, um, without getting up early in the morning and like doing 75 hard, like some, a lot of, not even some, a lot of BSers in the trading world are where they, you know, they're on Twitter, they're in their little Discord chat rooms, look how disciplined I am in the gym, putting in the work. And then if you know what they really do in real life outside of their, you know, fake ass discipline, social media existence, you would laugh. So I'm not trying to stir up any drama. I just want to be real with you. I want more millionaire students. You do not have to do your 10,000 steps. You do not have to have like, uh, a solid group of people around you, like your net worth is your network. It's not. The network of people in trading, guess what? Mostly degenerate gamblers. 90% of traders lose. So I don't think that you should consider your network is your net worth. You know what your net worth is? Your actual money. That's your net worth. You can take that literally in trading. Add on if you want to, you know, be uh, hypothetical and you want to, you know, make analogies, add to your net worth, your knowledge, your preparation. I would rather you guys study more video lessons, study these plays in real time, you know, paper trade them, than hang out with anybody else or get into any BS community where there's groupthink, you know? Previously, you had Atlas trading and a lot of promoters. They're all pumping up stocks. Now you have a lot of short selling chat rooms. Everyone likes to group together because guess what? Trading is lonely. But so what? Okay. Once you study enough, once you get self-sufficient enough, trust me, I used to be an introvert. I used to have no life. I used to have no money too. Once you get self-sufficient, once you get enough confidence, once you get enough experience, once you get enough money, the world is yours. You don't need networks of degenerate gamblers and groupthink communities. I'm very proud that if you look in the challenge chat and anywhere where I teach, some people are going long, some people are going short, some people are holding for 30 minutes, some people like to hold for two days, some people like to trade for three weeks. There's a wide variety of what works in this industry. 
Do not give in to groupthink. If you see everyone else buying, don't feel like you have to buy too. Consider going short. I don't think shorting right now is good, but I want you to learn to go against the grain, okay? And this is what you'll see me doing. Um, taking trade after trade, sometimes screwing up the trades, and the goal is to show you how I can still grow my accounts while not being perfect. That's today's lesson. Leave a comment underneath this video. Let me know if you understand this.